So, Paul, tell us the story of bipolar and transcendental meditation. Well, <clears throat> TM was the difference between surviving with bipolar and thriving with bipolar. Uh, you know, between getting by and really flourishing. When I met Bobby, I was working that warehouse job. I remember I was I was sawing a piece of wood, and I was uh, telling myself over and over again, it's not going to get better than this. It's not going to get better than this. It's not going to get better than this. And as I was doing it, I was slowly visualizing my hand going closer and closer to the saw, and I knew that if I just pushed right through, it would all be over, and there'd be something on the other side that wasn't this. And I called my dad, and I was trying to convince him uh, to let go of me, you know, anything I could tell him to just have him, if he understood what I was going through, he, he, he'd, uh, he'd let go. He, he would be able to and convincing me to get over it. And he was, came running in a panic, uh, to, to the job and the look on his face will f forever remain imprinted in my brain. And it's that look on his face that made me resign to being on the meds uh, and just getting by because I just couldn't put him through that anymore. And I knew that if I killed myself, it would destroy him. It would destroy the whole family. If you can imagine, uh, feeling nothing, feeling numb, imagine missing feeling sad. It's the only thing worse than pain. Imagine a relative of yours dies who you love so much and you can't even feel it, which is what happened to me. Because uh, of medication? Because of the medication. And this is why so many people can't fathom why these people go off their medication and end up falling into the one in four suicide statistic. Or, you know, they can't fathom that these people who are by nature meant to feel life deeply are supposed to give up life and just witness it happening while they wait for death. When Bobby called me, this was, uh, this was in the middle of that state. He invited me, you know, to go do documentary work with him. And, uh, and he said, you know, we're opening these schools. And I remember I went with them and immediately the community was nourishing. Immediately the community was nourishing. And then it was at that time I met this guy who was bipolar in San Francisco. It was, we were opening up the first school, Visitation Valley in San Francisco. And he told me- This was, was to put our quiet time program to put uh, transcendental meditation as- begin and end of each school day with meditation. So he told me he was, he was bipolar one, which is the real deal, which is what I have, uh, which, uh, there's not usually many hopeful examples of. And he said that he was happy 80% of the time for the last 20 years that he'd been meditating. I couldn't believe it. I was like, um, uh, I mean, if you're bipolar, you, you, you don't throw that word around lightly, you know? And, you know, if, if you're saying happy, I mean, you really mean it. And I, I never stopped without fail. And that's when uh, uh, Dr. Rosenthal, uh, he was my doctor and he witnessed the power of it. And he was so blown away by the power of it, he decided to do a study on the effects of TM on, uh, on bipolar. And the study was so successful that he decided to write the book about it. When you settle your system down in a way that's natural, in a way that's healthy and you don't need these heavy meds to, to filter your system and to filter your senses, you're actually able to experience so much more of the emotion uh, while at the same time being stable so they don't knock you over. To me, that was the difference between telling someone who you're treating that you're gonna crush an illness and telling someone that you're treating you're going to teach them how to support a gift. What I was hoping with the film is for people to be able to sit down in that hospital chair and for the doctors to tell them, you know what, Van Gogh conceived the most beloved image of the sky that humanity holds dear because of what he experienced when he was looking outside his sanitarium window. And while he didn't have to be manic to paint it because he painted it when he was stable, if he gave humanity its most beloved sky, this cannot simply be defined as a human defect, a human illness, a human disorder. 
because when you walk away from the hospital, you don't have any word to choose from that's not in some way a disorder, manic depressive, bipolar. It's like, what do you, what do you walk away with from that? It's a very different story that I feel like we have to create for society in order for the people to appreciate the beauty of it and in order for the people who have it to see people appreciating that beauty, which will allow them to be proud of it and which will allow them to come out about it. And that's the only way to kill the stigma. Right now they're telling you, you're not your illness, but we know it's in our genes. How important, or is it not that important, is the addition of meditation in that mix, in that do you see this as something that needs to be added? Meditation, as I said, I genuinely do not think that you can thrive with bipolar and the gifts that come from with bipolar because any other way is going to be the medication, which settles you down by wrangling in your emotions and filtering up all your senses and all your, and all your sensitivity. And suddenly you're getting by and, 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 and that's all you have. Meditation's known ability to settle you down and to also heighten your sensitivity, heighten your emotions, allows you to drop the medication. As I said, I am below the minimum recommendation, which no one is at. It's just me, because I'm one of the only people who, who meditates this religiously, and at the same time, um, you know, I've, I've been patient. But I genuinely feel that rich, deep emotion that's sustainable and that I, I'm allowed to, exp- I'm, I'm able to experience it without getting thrown off. For you to create such a masterpiece with such nuance and such tenderness and such power and fearlessness, and you took me some places where I didn't really necessarily want to go, but you brought me there again with a, a nuance and a tenderness that was so authentic. And um, I can say this because I'm older incredibly proud of you and um love you very much and this is just the beginning you you are i think going to lead this transformation of an understanding that bipolar is something that's to be nurtured rather than squashed or uh, uh, marginalized or destroyed so thank you very much and thank all of you very much for coming out this was just an absolutely extraordinary evening thank you so much